Welcome back to Movie Nights. Uh, and we're looking at Hulk Hogan box. Oh yeah, the Hulk Hogan. They're complete Siri. Die, die Hulk die. Hogan. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> this is totally what we watched too, was this German set. Yeah, this German set is so far the only release of this series and like the whole series. You can get the Thunder in Paradise movies in English, but the actual series only in German. Apparently. Um, well, let's explain a little bit what this is. Um, Thunder in Paradise was a show created by the executive producer of Baywatch, Gregory Bonin. Uh, if I'm pronouncing that right, I don't know. But anyway, he created a show with Hulk Hogan, and it's basically... Some of it is very Baywatch-esque, but um, yeah. the plot of it is uh, Hulk Hogan has a fancy boat with lots of different gadgets and stuff, and will go on various missions. And I guess that's kind of the, the idea of it. Um, and they have he has a, a little girl in it, um, and a partner. But not that kind of partner. Brother. It's, it's not his little girl, but <laughs> yeah. she becomes he his stole her. in the parent world championship <laughs> match. <laughs> so you will notice uh, within the series, there's lots of uh, guest stars that were on Baywatch. There's lots of different wrestlers that are uh, pals with yeah. Hogan. Ed Leslie as Brutus, he was really stretching. <laughs> it's like, man, I don't know if I know how to play Brutus yet. <laughs> Can't believe it. They decided to release uh, a few of the two-part episodes as movies, and um, the first one is Thunder in Paradise, yeah. which is just the pilot movie, so... Yeah, which was released as a movie first, it seems, or at least... Yeah, that's what they tended to do, mm -hmm. it, like, just in case it didn't get picked up as a series, it's made to be, like, a standalone movie. And then they chopped up part of the pilot movie and then used that to make episode 15 of the regular series. Yeah. Which well, gets especially confusing because the uh, actress of the little girl was different for the pilot than it was the rest of the series, so suddenly she degenerates back into her for that one episode. <laughs> so the movie cut of the pilot of Thunder in Paradise does include some things that aren't in the actual two-part pilot because they cut it for TV, which is why they repurpose some of it for a later episode. But basically, it's following the plot of the pilot and all the things that they dropped for the series that they didn't bother doing later anyway. Sinus is clear. I told you to warn me before you sneeze. How does Thunder in Paradise begin? Well, it begins with two jackasses, Hogan and his best friend, Iron Brew, on their TARDIS boat, which is much bigger on the inside than it is the out. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, you we're see, trying, to, trying to figure out the logistics of how this boat works. You, you see, it's just like you know, a little speeder boat around the outside shots. It's just the two of them in their two seats driving it, but then they go down, it's just this massive control room area where they can also drive the boat from below. Got all these screens, connections to satellites, they got everything down there. Trying to figure out how or or what how this came about is kind of confusing. Like um, maybe Zordon gave it to them. Zordon, gave, they do have a very Power Rangers yeah. voice for the boat. The boat will say things, but it's not like Kit from Knight Rider. It's not sentient, but it will say things like yeah. powering up. Autopilot engaged. For people who can't read, I guess. <laughs> Which is Hogan. <laughs> I'm the reading champion. <laughs> I'll like drop those books. Da, 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 da. So, so apparently he was a Navy SEAL. We're just assuming he was a SEAL because everyone he around that He was probably time... in the Navy at the same time as Mitch. Yeah, at the same time as Mitch. Because any of those shows at this point in time, all, all of them are either ex-Navy SEALs or current Navy SEALs. Yeah. Um, but he was part. He was in the Navy with his buddy, Brew, and... He, he designed just, this boat himself. He, yeah, he and just, the Navy said it was too extreme, so he had to go off on his own and be a vigilante with his best friend in their thunderboat. Well, he, he, he invents this boat, which is, you gotta suspend your disbelief that Hulk Hogan created this boat with his friend. <laughs> he, he takes credit for this whole thing, even though it's clear the other guy is supposed to be the brain guy. 
Because he says he was at MIT, and then he's talking about how he made the stealth thing, and then, like, Hogan doesn't know, like, oh, I don't know if the yeah, stealth will he's work. he's the tech guy for sure. He's the tech guy, but Hogan takes credit. He just says that he built it himself. He doesn't even mention the other guys involved. Like, and this is just for, like, the little girl. It's all me, brother. He's just trying to impress a little girl. It's not even anyone important. It's just like, little girl, you don't know, I murdered this boat. little girl is Hogan's daughter. <laughs> she's Later, the most right important now, little girl. Right now, she's just some random little girl that he's talking yeah, to. But he was scouting for little kids. <laughs> little kids to <laughs> finally, to kill their parents and not. <laughs> he's thinking of tying her around his waist as a championship. <laughs> <laughs> uh! <laughs> but I don't get, he says that he quit the Navy and built the rest of the boat himself. He sunk all of his money into this. But then he's still trying to get money from the Navy later? He goes bankrupt, pretty much. He's, yeah, he goes He's going to lose everything, including his Thunder boat. Yeah, but then the Navy uh, puts their funding into a similar prototype. Because apparently someone else made a super-powered boat that was better than theirs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And he couldn't handle that. <laughs> he, he was like, you know... Instead of being bankrupt, I can get rid of my diamond-encrusted belt buckles, <laughs> my snakeskin boots, yeah. but, uh... You can't sell any of that now. Nope, looks like I'm gonna be bankrupt. <laughs> I tried fighting the system, I lost. So the beginning of this has them in their thunder boat, going off to do a, apparently an unpaid mission over to Cuba. Apparently he's got lots of Cuban refugee friends. Like, he's like, yeah, I promised that we'd go rescue his wife and son. That's what we're gonna do. But on the way, he brings out some pasta, and it's pasta mania running wild, brother. <laughs> he's like, I just got this from the pasta mania restaurant. You can go there right now, bro, brother. <laughs> 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 It's a complex carb, man. <laughs> yeah, I did love that. Complex carbs, gotta do it. Have energy for the mission, brother. Like rocket fuel. Complex carbs, kick in like rocket fuel. There's so much <laughs> snacking going on in this TARDIS boat yeah, during the series. They like, do love eating down there. Yeah, apparently, like, I don't know, maybe they got really snacky on set and they're like, just incorporated it and I'm gonna eat. <laughs> <laughs> How far is this island to us? If he had his pasta mania restaurant, I'm sure that he would have plugged it there. Yeah. <laughs> Fresh from pasta mania. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when, when they get there, they are they are spotted immediately because the stealth doesn't work because Hogan wasn't in charge of the stealth, so that didn't work. It was Bruce. Yeah, that was Iron Bruce's fault. So Hulk Hogan's like, no, no, brother, we gotta do this. So he proceeds to shoot him and his jet ski into the air out <laughs> of the boat to go rescue these Cuban refugees from Castro himself, apparently. If they're caught, Castro can use them to force Palma back from the States and execute him. He, he gets in the water and he's waiting under a pier and proceeds to break this pier with his bare hands <laughs> to, to, to get some of these goons. And they also use their uplink to satellites so Brew can watch Hulk Hogan from the roof. like. I assume Hulk Hogan himself made these satellites because he's a technological genius. He made them and then he's like, how do I get these into space? Whoosh! Do, 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 do. There's, there's no other explanation for how they have these satellite connections because they're just independently run. I mean, it's not like they're they're not rich, they're broke, so I don't know how how is he affording all these missiles? How is he affording any of this stuff? It's weird that this business venture led him to bankruptcy when he gets no pay for it, apparently. Hulk Hogan's always so good at business ventures. He'd never it's go bankrupt thing. in real life. I mean, and this is around the height of Cundamania in real life. <laughs> WrestleMania 9, he's sporting his fucking uh, jet, jet ski injury in this. Yeah, he, uh, he had a jet ski accident just before they or during the shooting, sometime around when they were shooting the pilot. So they incorporated it in that he was he got he sucker got punched. sucker punched by Jim Nyhart <laughs> off screen. But then when they do episode fifteen much later, they show the sucker punch. Uh huh. They have a, they had to dedicate an episode to this petty grudge that he has with this guy. <laughs> and Hogan's gonna make sure he gets him. Yeah. See, they they do it in this in this episode. They show you his comeuppance because it couldn't be just an accident. It has to be some asshole did it, and Hogan gets him back. Because he can't just get away with that. He's got to get him back for this 
eye injury that he has. So yeah, they have like uh, an arm mm-hmm. wrestling match to to be square on this, where they got Jimmy Hart there and Brutus there. And Brutus, he's playing Hogan's best friend. <laughs> so new. He's playing Brutus, Hogan's best friend. Hmm. I don't know if we can play that. It's quite a stretch, but I'll try. Can you lose and make him look good? I think I can do that. Can you job in this arm wrestling match for me? <laughs> Gotta no sell this yeah. wrestling. You lose, and then it'll make me look better when I beat Jim Nighthard. <laughs> Yes! No! No! Yes! Yes! No! We also assume he's probably the local barber who just comes by and gets drunk every time Hogan has a victory. Yeah, he has no lines, but every at the uh, every wrap up, he's always hanging he out at that bar. Lines. Well, he, he has he has some lines, he, but no significant lines. Yeah, just some incidental stuff like "Yay, Hogan!" Yeah, and then he'll just show up at the bar, and and then like he just get drunk over there, like "Yeah, celebrate! I was totally your buddy the whole time." An eye for an eye. An eye for an eye. <laughs> yeah, and that was the name of the episode where they did the flashback to how this happened. Because mm-hmm. everyone was wondering, what what more is there to this story? I want to know what else happened that involved this this eye injury that he got. Uh, thank God they expanded on it. Because they could use significantly more footage they've already shot for that episode. <laughs> Need a longer goatee to do Jim Nyhart. <laughs> <laughs> what happens after that? Nothing. That's well, the I guess end. that's the whole movie. Hogan <laughs> got his petty revenge game over. Under in paradise. I liked his line where he said, I can see more with one eye than you can with two. <laughs> Brew, you're useless, brother. <laughs> I can see better with one eye than you can see with two. So uh, he's friends with this little girl for some reason. And uh, apparently sharks had to job the Hogan off screen. So he just has a bunch of dead sharks that he's like taking random things out of. Like yeah, he's... License plates. Yeah, apparently sharks just eat everything in the sea, just every yeah. junk that they see in front of them, like, they're, they're gonna eat. I think he found his, uh, lost Bret Hart in there. He's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> never gonna find this again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of his league. <laughs> so, and he explains, too, about the sharks, like, he's like, it's hard to tell, see, if he's making this up for the little girl's benefit, like, you know, like, telling a story because the little girl thinks it's exciting, or he really is that, like, egotistical, <laughs> like, he has to, to, like, tell this story about how he would, like, the Navy trapped him with a shark or something, and then he had to beat it off. Yeah, I like that it, part of it was he was really drunk, too. <laughs> like, that's a good story for the little girl. Did he say that? Yeah, he's like, got me really drunk and threw me in with a <laughs> well, shark. That's the only reason he would lose to the shark, yeah. is if he was drunk. But of course, he still won, it just took him a little longer. Yeah, the shark started biting him, but then of course he started hulking up on the shark. <laughs> no selling its bites. A mortal leg drop, that shark was out of there. <laughs> then, I got my hand inside its gill, the other on its dorsal, and I yanked as hard as I could. What happened then? Well, you know that sound that Velcro makes when you rip it apart? <laughs> Ugh. Blood and shark guts everywhere. And he says once he once he got rid of that shark, he just had to like kill sharks for himself now. And so he, apparently he just kills and eats sharks. He, he has like his shark trophies all over the wall in the episode. And so he's gutting this fucking shark in front of this little girl. Like just like, oh yeah, let's see what's in the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Any presents for you? Yep, a necklace. Here, let me put it on you. <laughs> Just, he doesn't clean it. No, like, which is know. hilarious because when her mother comes out later and sees her wearing this, it's like, he got it from a shark. And she's like, what? Don't worry, it was dead. And she's like, it's still. It's like, oh, he cleaned it, mom. No, he didn't. <laughs> he pulled it from the shark and said, here you go. <laughs> he didn't do the bare minimum you would expect for something you pull out of a shark to give to someone. Yeah. Clean it off. Here. A present from me and the shark. And then he immediately, they go parasailing to get to the scuttlebutt grill or bar. <laughs> <laughs> scuttlebutt. Where Carol Alt's doing her terrible New Yorker accent. His stepbrother's family built the hotel. 
When he died last year, he left it to his daughter Megan. Well, she becomes the main girl in the series, um, but she's sort of a secondary character in the yeah. pilot movie because she's, she's sort she's of bruised in the pilot. She's set up as his romantic interest, but then afterward, it's kind of like, no, she can be with Hogan. You don't <laughs> get her, bro. So the, the main girl uh, the, of this movie is the the sort of love interest, um, who is the the mother of the little girl. And she's uh, this British lady who owns the hotel. The British tot. The British tot. She's so churlish. Why does he have to be so churlish? She's kind of the stick in the mud, and she's she owns the Paradise Hotel. Is that why it was it was called Paradise, yeah. right? So that was the pun. Thunder it's in part Paradise. of it, yeah. Yeah, even Thunder though the hotel, in Paradise. as far as we know, the hotel was not part of the rest of the series. Yeah, maybe, there's maybe like some the scenes uncle. in it. Yeah, they, they, I assume he's in the hotel, but yeah. I don't think it has much to do with the rest of the series. Well, but clearly they changed what they were going to do. Yeah, either that or the actress left and they just didn't bother recasting like they did the little girl for whatever reason. Well, it seems to me that either they didn't like the premise that that they were married and they mm. wanted to make sure and that they had other love I need friends. to run wild on all the women, brother! <laughs> I can't be tied down! It, it seems to me that they either didn't like that or they thought that she was kind of a stick in the mud and they didn't really want to have that type of character there that was kind of like always bitching at him. The one thing that RJ Hurricane Spencer likes more than that monstrous thunderbolt of his is... is his precious freedom. Well, that's basically the plot of this is she needs to get married within 48 yeah, hours. Yeah, because her dad was a fucking asshole made some weird clause like, if you aren't married by such and such time, you lose the hotel and it goes to your crazy uncle, who's some guy who used to be a Bond villain and he's also in the old Avengers. She never thought of this before, like two days beforehand, like, oh yeah, that is coming up and I'm gonna lose it. No, she did. She did. She, they were talking about it and he was, he mentions that she has to do that, the uncle. And she's like, you swore that you would never enforce that. And he's like, oh, well, the more I think about it, the more I want to. <laughs> she didn't realize her uncle was evil, you see. But he, he hit it this. so well, I'm sure the rest of her life, it never came up. I've known I couldn't trust you since I was six and caught you with your hand in my Halloween bag. I was merely making sure there were no razor blades in it. I don't know why he reveals this before the deadline's up, because then he gives her time to do it. But it's got to be a marriage of true love. That's the thing. And so she comes up with this charade with Hulk Hogan that if he marries her, pretends that it's a marriage of true love, then she will give him the funding to keep Thunder, the, the boat, because he's going. it's going to be taken by the bank. Bank with possessions <laughs> in paradise. <laughs> so they decide they're going to have this sham of a marriage in order to save it. But he's got to think about it first. And so he has that really sad, introspective acting scene where he rides on his motorcycle in his assless chaps and, and goes to the and he boat. he drives by Brutus, who's like, ooh, looking at his ass, like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that, Hogan? I can I can make you look sexier. <laughs> you, you need me to give you a little... Uh... I love, too, that he's apparently one of his best men. And he's got like three best yeah, men. Jimmy Hart and Ed Leslie are two of his best men. Like, but they don't uh, they don't have many lines. Again, we don't know even their character names until you see the credits. But apparently they're just some guys he he met arm wrestling some dude. But and you like, know, oh, Brutus man. always shows up at the beach for Hogan's wrap up victories. So he's a true friend. Yeah. <laughs> Free drinks. Yeah. No, the new brother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they got the sham of marriage that the uncle is trying to expose. And, and Hogan immediately no-sells the engagement by <laughs> making out with some woman who's all like, I can't believe you're getting married, no! Because, you know, that's the reaction of every woman in the world when they heard this. <laughs> I don't sell marriages. <laughs> and then he goes up to British girl like, and you know what? You're not even in my league, brother. <laughs> I'm the marriage world champion. Walk! <laughs> you keep playing dropping. Land drop! Marriage is mine! 
I'm so badass that the marriage takes place during a hurricane because I'm the hurricane. Because he is Hurricane. <laughs> hurricane Hogan. <laughs> Should have been his name. Hollywood Hurricane. <laughs> Hollywood Hurricane Hogan. Yeah. <laughs> he is. He's R Triple H. Oh no. <laughs> Fuck. He's RJ Hurricane Spencer. For those of you who want to know his real name in the series. But who cares? He's Hulk Hogan. Darling, I love you. And I love you. The, the necklace that he gave to the little girl, it turns out that it was lost by some crime lord terrorist people. Mm -hmm. um, and it is when the beads are put together, they will form a map to a treasure which Sam Jones is looking for, while simultaneously eating every piece of scenery he can find. <laughs> you two, hit the bag, the jewels, the money, the diamonds, the keys to your boat, put them in the bag, tie it to the rope, send it up. Favorite part is his little dance. So you'll go to the sharks. Do -do 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 -do. It's time to feed the sharks. And the part when Hogan tells him he's going to rip his heart out through his throat. He's like, ouch! <laughs> <laughs> it seems like he's kind of playing it like it's a little kid show, but everyone else is kind of playing it more adult, sort of. Yeah, the show comes off kiddy, like, we're talking like about with the, the zordon -y voice for the boat. You're just like, what is this? <laughs> Who is this supposed to be for? Because it's... Besides Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Because it seems like it's sort of towards kids, but then there's stuff like slow motion boobs and things like that. Like, it's more kid oriented than Baywatch is. Baywatch is more of like family with some TNA for the adults, hmm. but uh, like Thunder in Paradise seems like it's for kids, but then they'll have like lots of plots with terrorists. I guess if you're into wrestling, it's it's right up your alley, because, hey, that's it's on par with most acting uh, wrestling acting. Since there's half the acting is done by wrestlers in it. I love... We, one of the main bad guys is Giant Gonzalez. While he was uh, carving pelicans on the beach, he decided that he needed to... He needed to fight off Hulk Hogan and become a bad guy. He's at least not wearing his... Fucking awful body suit <laughs> like you did on his Baywatch episode. Yeah, but he's just a wearing commando dignified. gear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Except the next time he shows up, less dignified. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <what> you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> he's there mostly just to fight Hogan and throw him into like empty buildings so he can no sell. <laughs> empty buildings, empty boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Random yeah. old granny chairs on boats. That yeah. For no <laughs> they fight on a boat and there's just a whole bunch of empty boxes and empty barrels. <laughs> like, hey, get my shipment of empty boxes to be quick. I need more empty boxes. My favorite is though when he throws them through the building and then just like, uh, anyway, I'm alright. Hogan and. <laughs> Hulking up! Oh. Isn't that after he falls, Brutus comes over and wants to like check his dick? Like, yeah. No, let me polish you off, sir! <laughs> Jimmy Hart, what the hell am I doing here? I like he wore his uh, keyboard jacket for the wedding too. Yeah, it it's classy. just his usual attire. I think all of them just wore their own clothes. This I don't think they had like a wardrobe it. department. They had a closet full of camo, and that's about it. <laughs> They look for this treasure, they find the map, and then of course the little girl draws it and that ends up getting her and the other woman kidnapped. So Hogan, his new wife, and Brew go follow this map to an island and they end up in a hole uh, and they find the treasure. And then of course Sam Jones is hamming it up and gets the treasure from them. <laughs> All right, so they moved the incredibly fake rock over the top of the cave. Um, because they thought it was too unrealistic for Hogan to, like, move a mountain, so they just had to, like, <laughs> make it smaller I'm for him. sure he suggested a mountain first, like, <laughs> what if it's just under a mountain? <laughs> it's not the spot. We can shoot it so it's a mountain, just kind of crop it a little. <laughs> just add some CG rocks on top of it. Oh! The CG's so good in this series. <laughs> Boat transform! <laughs> So they got to go rescue the girl, uh, the, the girls, and get the treasure back, and they got to get out of this hole. And there's like a pool of water there, and they've got some supplies with them, so he gets these glow sticks. <laughs> 
you know, one of my favorite things. Because, you know, it's one of those stupid things on TV or movie where they embellish something for no fucking reason. Like, sometimes it, you know, enhances the plot. You can get past it. But when they just do something nonsensical that they had to do more work for for no reason, it's just like, what the fuck was the point of that? Because he goes in this little pool with glow sticks. Suddenly, boom, this green light comes up from the water and shines on Brew and the British girl. <gasps> Suddenly, it's, it's like of Yeah, it's like, I was just going to say that. It's like Secret of the Ooze poster. Like, oh man, Hogan's mutating down there. He's the only one that can go under there and look for a way out. So he's got to like oxygenate his blood <laughs> so that he can he can go underwater look for this. I don't know if this is a real thing. Maybe it is, but it sure as hell isn't the way he's doing it. <sighs> Luckily, I wore my speedo under this pole. <laughs> he, yeah, he finds he goes a way in out. the underwater tunnel mm -hmm. and sees. You no, know, the the surface of the water, and, and then really he, fake pool that he's <laughs> yeah. In. He's like, well, time to go back. He doesn't go up for air first, so by the time he gets back, he's like dying. <laughs> <laughs> and so and Brew holds him in his arms. No, what will the world do without a Hulkamania? No. <laughs> Brutus shows up, sir. Can yeah. I help? Let me do that. No. <laughs> Looks like the Hulkster's in heaven! <laughs> no! <laughs> you're the Hulkster in heaven, Brutus! Boom! <laughs> what are you gonna do when heaven runs wild on you? When the Hulkster comes to heaven Heaven, heaven, heaven We'll tag up again In order to get out, because the other two can't oxygenate their blood like he can, uh, Hogan, <laughs> Hogan, Hogan farts in a pot. <laughs> <laughs> he, he farts in a popcorn bag. So that everyone, everyone's they can off. get some air because they got some air they trapped can, in the bag. Yeah, they can go and suck some air in. But, but we assumed at one point Hogan <laughs> stuck his ass up in the bag and farted ah. because you look at the shots where he's waving Megan <laughs> over to it. He's like, "Come on, get the air, get the air!" And then she goes up to get it the second time and then just passes out. <laughs> like, yeah, we know what happened. She's the only one they show getting any air in there, so yeah. we can only assume something was wrong with the air. It, it, it was fine first, and then it knocked her out. Hogan farted in it. <laughs> only explanation. And of course, the, the bad guys try to steal the boat in the meantime, but it determines because they're the wrong... due to their weight and activity, yeah. it's not Hogan. Incorrect weight and activity! <laughs> Your weight and activity do not match those of authorized personnel. Non Hulkamaniacs! <laughs> <laughs> Insert pasta to override. <laughs> pasta mania must run wild. You have three seconds to insert spaghetti. <laughs> and oh no, we don't have spaghetti! <laughs> this, the boat electrocutes them, but there's no effect, so it's just them standing on it going. <laughs> Well, they wasted their lightning effects on the title card. They didn't have <laughs> enough money left for that. Before Hogan goes onto the boat to fight them there, he starts putting on some war paint. And Megan's like, what are you doing? He's like, a little psychological warfare. What are you doing? A little psychological warfare. Psychological warfare to him is just snapping necks, punching people. Like he, at no point is there anything psychological about what he's doing. Yeah, he puts he sleepers one guy, he and then he throws the them boat. off the boat. And I guess they were dead since they, if they were knocked out, they drowned. So good uh, one, Hogan. Really got in your head there, brother. I love that there's this one guy who challenges him. He's like, yeah, 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 and then he like hits him a few times. No selling the shit out of that, brother. 
boom, leg drop off the boat. Hogan wins the Royal Rumble on a boat. A little psychological warfare. Sam Jones holds him hostage, he gets him, and he's doing his really tense acting, like, oh, I'm gonna hold this oh, shit. Then Hogan no-sells drowning. Okay, yeah, yeah, he throws him, well, <laughs> They have the friend, the brew goes in there with like an oxygen tank or something, and I think he gives him some air, but then something happens where Hogan still has to save the day, like he's like, no, no, I gotta get final credit for this one. It, your air's not even in my lead, brother. Spencer, I, I, I don't know what to say. You'll think of something later. The bad guys shoot a missile at them. And Hogan lag drops the missile. <laughs> they go into missile cam, and then Hogan's like, I want the missile to follow us, so that he turns around and can shoot the missile cam at the boat. Missile cam's great, because it's just like a missile attached to a vehicle, so you, you just see yeah. like it on the very edge of the frame, and you don't see how it's <laughs> flying. It looks terrible. <laughs> it's amazingly awful. And they blow up the boat and Sam Jones. And Brew goes, what about the treasure map? Because that's what the <laughs> necklace was all about. It was a treasure map. And Hogan goes, don't worry. There's always another day in paradise, brother. What about the treasure map? There's always another day in paradise. <laughs> all right, so maybe it'd be a better day in paradise with a map to a treasure. <laughs> and our treasure. Maybe they continued it in- Well, I guess they had the treasure, so they don't really need the map. Just, what about the treasure? Let's get that. Yeah, maybe they continued it in Plunder in Paradise. Maybe that was the continuation of it. No. <laughs> no, they just fucking lost it. <laughs> and they get back, and there's still that sham of a marriage going on. I don't know, they never thought about how that would affect the little girl, you know, like, they're like, oh, yeah, she's gonna be really Amazing. happy with, like, her parents. Because she's, she's really, she really likes Hulk Hogan's character, because, I mean, everyone has to like Hulk Hogan. And they're just like, yeah, that's not gonna screw up at all, that we're just having a loveless marriage and we'll definitely break up at some point. And, uh, apparently it happens off screen between movies, because this ends with fucking creeper uncle watching them on a camera have sex yeah, to they, see if they can they fake having sex, but yeah, the, the show ends with them making moaning noises in bed together with uncle watching to make sure it's real. It's so creepy. It's like, wait, zoom in on his dick. I need to see the penetration to know it's real. Ah, 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 ah. And uh, they do the little wrap up, and Brutus sucks his dick, and that's the end of the first one, Thunder in Paradise. I can't believe this. Uh, as a standalone movie, it would have been it's it's a silly thing. You don't really need to know what happens in the series. They drop a lot of stuff. Like we said, the 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 wife character is just gone. We don't know what happens because yeah. it's not. We can't, this is all in German. Yeah, we've looked at the next episode briefly in German, and her uncle pulls out a picture and says something about her, and Hogan has to lift the car to keep the kid. I guess that's how they explain how he just adopts the child, but the, the wife is gone. I don't know. She says, kid now, brother, the parents world champion! Oh! Like, <laughs> like drops the little girl. <laughs> yeah. This is really funny. I like yeah, this. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> you know, it's cheesy action shit with Hulk Hogan. Can't really go wrong with that. Yeah, I recommend it. Hilarious. What you gonna do when Thunder in Paradise runs wild on you? Suck your dick. I can't believe this! Thunder in Paradise! Suck in, don't <laughs> Brutus, the best character! Here's to Hulk Hogan!
Worship! Worship! Worship!